Marigali is now a resident of Austin, Texas, and has linked up with John Danaher and the New Wave Jiu-Jitsu team, and that's who's in the coach's chair for Marigali in this match. Ooh, a well-timed guard. Interception there from Mr. Muniz gets him an early two points. And just a reminder that Nicholas Marigali has a 100% submission rate at the World Championships so far this weekend. Yeah, it's been a really stunning campaign from Nicholas Marigali in his weight class and the absolute. Opened up today with a wild match with Felipe Andrew. If you didn't catch the one, go back and watch the replay. Felipe brought the heat, but Marigali eventually secured the submission win. And uh, yeah, he's just been, you know, really dynamic, incredible athlete. Also one of the few that, that kind of goes against it, the mm -hmm. statistic that uh, if you score first, you're the one to usually win. Typically in jiu-jitsu, that's the case, but Marigali, such an aggressive fighter, always looking for the finish, sometimes proves that one wrong. Oh, look at this deep lasso hook here from Marigali. It's just something that he's so good at. It's kind of interesting, though, because, you know, we see the styles. We see, first of all, we see the physics of both Marigali and Muniz. Very similar, very long, very leggy, and uh, obviously both in the super heavyweight division, so the same weight. But then, stylistically, they share certain things. Number one, of course, is that long, those long legs. They use them so well in creating distance. This Della X position here from Nicholas Marigali, such a powerful tool. He's used this since the brown belt days. But on top, both extremely quick, great footwork, great guard passes. So for me, very intriguing and very interesting to see exactly how their jujitsu matches up right here. Well, aggressively chasing a loop trick there for a second was Marigali. He's so good at that. Well, there's John Danaher sat in the coach's chair, keeping a very close eye on his new athlete, Mr. Marigali, who joined joined up with him right at the beginning, I believe, of uh, 20 or end of 2021, beginning of 2022. Nice sweep there from Marigali. And of course, the idea was that the Danaher would help him get ready for ADCC and Nogi competition, but the the relationship seems to have been very beneficial in, in many different aspects. Absolutely. Uh, Nicholas has talked about in his interviews feeling refreshed, you know, a new love for jiu-jitsu. And uh, it shows, you know, we talked about all weekend how he's having a good time out there. He's not uh, feeling like a caged animal, you know, uh, like a wild beast. He's just simply trying to show off his jiu-jitsu. And so far, it's done so in stunning fashion. Now, when we see, oh, there it is, I was about to say, when we see Muniz play on bottom, do not be surprised to see him employ lapel tactics, 50-50. He is, uh, he's really good at tying up his opponents from bottom. When he's on top, he's got a very open game. He's got great Toriander-style passing, great footwork, just like Nicholas Marigali. But on bottom, whereas you'll see Marigali play pri primarily collar sleeve. Oh, going high, he's Marigali trying to get an arm, but that's gonna be two points for Muniz. And whereas Marigali uses the lasso and collar sleeve from bottom, Muniz loves the 50-50 and the lapel. But in this case, I kind of feel like Marigali hasn't really been fighting those sweeps too hard. He's like, yeah, I don't mind being on bottom. He's just so confident in his guard. And There's the collar sleeve. Look at that. So aggressive with the, the free leg, right? Constantly stomping on his opponent's shoulder and hip, uh, sorry, yeah, shoulder, hip, bicep. I think you don't need to be a long-legged guard player to take inspiration from watching somebody like this do jujitsu either, right? Yeah, he's just so aggressive in pursuit of submission, but also throwing guys over his head, off balances from everywhere. Very dexterous legs, you know. Munisa, uh, pretty conservative on top for now. I mean, I can't blame him. Eric Gali's throwing the kitchen sink at him. But definitely not working too hard for the pass at this point in time. I think he's assessing the situation here. Waiting for Eric Gali to maybe slow down just a little bit. I don't know if he will.
Very interesting to note the way that Marigali threads the lasso on one side the moment it comes out, he puts it in on the other, then he goes Dela Hiva. He's always looking to try to hook something or other. Muniz had a, a momentary flash of trying to come over the top there. Look at the extension that Marigali must employ to try and knock Muniz down. Could come up for two here. Because Muniz is so long. Sweeping somebody that, that long, even with long legs, Marigali has to put extra step into it. Marigali opts to come to top. That'll be two points for him. Evens yeah. the score. And you have to think he's going to try and get this passing going before Muniz gets a hold of the lapel and slows things down. You know, I've never seen Marigali go for a leg lock in his entire career. He just does not attack the lower body. He only attacks arm locks, kimuras, loop chokes, triangles, chokes on the back. Never seen him go for a leg lock, ever. Here we see Muniz, lapel in action. Nice off balance there from Muniz in knocking the hips to the mat. Just over three minutes remaining in this match, 4-4 on the scoreboard. Marigali posting his hand on the mat, but his hips are off and doesn't look to be in the most uh, stable of positions right here. This posture is definitely compromised. I feel like Muniz is just waiting for that right moment to come up and to try and sweep once again. Here it is. Nice use of the panker from Marigali to maintain top position. But Muniz, great work to remain in attacking, attacking scenarios here. Oh, look at the way Marigali just immediately, he doesn't hang out at the 50-50. He's immediately trying to backstep around and, and to get out of that position. Muniz did well to catch the leg there and put the, the shin on the, the shelf, we like to say, you know, put it on, uh, on his shoulder to catch it. Now he's got almost something of a bear trap going as well. But that's the thing about Marigali, he will not settle down into the 50-50. The moment that somebody put, tries to put it on him. This could be a good uh, sweep here for Muniz as he looks to come up. Potentially, yes. And there's only just oh, under a minute and a half remaining now. Look at the way that immediately Muniz, he scores. He comes up on top and he disengages. Now so, this is interesting here. We have a minute and 20 seconds left. Two point lead for Muniz. Point Marigali lead. is going to have to really work to sweep and establish. And even that would just simply tie the score. Which Something would I'm sure he would not decision. want. Yeah, exactly. Right. Less than a minute now, 58 seconds. There going up on a single. Switching the grip here. Muniz looking to almost extract his leg. He's almost out. Oh, there oh. goes the I feel Marigali should have just dragged him back into the center of the mat and right on the edge of bounds, letting go of that leg. It's going to be hard to score two points now with only 23 seconds remaining on the official clock.
Gray word from Anise to set the tone early. Scored the first two points. We said that, that Merrick Gully sometimes proves that wrong, but that may not be the case in this match. Sits the guard, 15 seconds left. Yeah, look at the posture from uh, Muniz. He's getting his grips. He's staying absolutely as far away as possible. He knows that. All he needed to do was to hang on. Just a couple of seconds, and the gold medal was his. In your 2022